Well, good morning, everybody. This is Pastor Randy Scott with Iron Faith Fellowship Church with our morning tidbits this morning. Hope everyone's doing well out there. Uh, kind of overcast, a little damp outside here in Wilmington, Delaware, but that doesn't dampen our spirits, does it? I love, uh, I, I probably drive people nuts with this, loving the rain, being uh, times of refreshing and renewing. Uh, That's what it reminds me of. But uh, I want to talk to you about something. Looking toward the cross, you know, this time of year that we're in right now, we're getting ready to celebrate Easter. And uh, of course, many people are celebrating in different ways. You know, our Jewish people are celebrating the Passover. We're celebrating the Passover, but in different ways. Uh, but we're looking forward to that day, uh, Easter morning, when we celebrate our risen Savior. And, you know, Jesus, uh, uh, as Jesus walked on this earth, uh, there came a point in time where he reminded the disciples of why he came. Okay. Uh, the purpose that he came for and what was going to happen and what was going to happen. And they didn't want to receive that. You know, sometimes, you know, when we tell people what Jesus went through for us, the beatings, the, tor the, the torture, the beatings, the degrading, the belittling, people find that hard to believe. Uh, but I don't. Uh, you know, I see how the world is getting right now, uh, how belittling and degrading and, and uh, it is. Uh, uh, so it's not hard to believe. But the, Jesus was always looking toward the cross. Always looking for toward the cross. And, you know, that was the reason he came. He was born to die. And, uh, you know, we celebrate Christmas in a big way. And it's a big celebration of time and uh, that Jesus was born. But he was born for this purpose, for this moment that we're getting ready to celebrate. You know, and it begins uh, today, you know, as the evening time hits, uh, you know, the Last Supper. You know, we know that the Last Supper was taking place. And then after that, he was in the garden. And uh, then he was taken uh, prisoner from the garden. And then the, the terrible times ensued. But he endured all that for us. Uh, you know, and I just don't think we really comprehend all that he went through, the agony and the pain and the torment. And even in the garden when he prayed, Lord, if this cup could pass from me, but nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours. You know, he still knew uh, he was still looking toward the cross. He knew that he had to face that day, but he took that day for us. He took our place, paid the price for us. Uh, you know, he became sin uh, so that we could become the righteousness of God. He became sin who knew no sin. Okay. Jesus was tempted in all ways as we were, but yet without sin. Think about that. You know, there was no reason for him. Uh, they couldn't find anything to, to really uh, proclaim him guilty. They brought in false uh, 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 people to bring in false stories and lies, and, and they could not confirm anything. Uh, but yet, you know, Jesus never uh, stopped anything, never stopped anything from taking place. And he also told Pilate, you know, he said, don't you know that I can call down legions, <laughs> legions, <laughs> legions of angels. You know, he could have stopped it at any time. He's God. He's God. But so when we come to this point in time, this is one of my favorite times. This is probably my most favorite time of the year. I look forward to Sunday morning. We have sunrise service. Uh, we go out to breakfast as a church and uh, uh, then we come back and, and uh, at 10 o'clock for our service. And uh, it's always an, a, a wonderful time. Uh, uh, a celebration time that Jesus is risen. He's no longer in the tomb. But I want to read the scripture. You know, in three three different times, he told the disciples what was going to happen. And they didn't want to receive it either. But in uh, uh, I'm going to read in uh, Matthew's gospel. Uh, uh, Peter just got done confessing uh, Jesus as the Christ, the anointed one. Uh, in verse 21 of chapter 16, it says, from that time on, he began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and what suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed. But listen to what he said and be raised on the third day. Then Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, far be it from you, Lord, this shall not happen to you. And Jesus turned to him and said, Peter, get thee behind me, Satan, for you are an offense to me, for you are not mindful of the things of God, but of the things of men. You know, Jesus has already been teaching these guys and training these guys, and they still didn't get it. And I think sometimes today we don't get it. We don't get the significance of this time of year and how important it is to our faith uh, uh, and how important it is that we share this in our faith, that we serve a risen Savior. All these other uh, deities that people worship and stuff are buried. They're still in the grave. No one is proclaiming that their uh, God who they serve has risen except for us. Jesus is risen. Why do we believe that? Because it says so in the word of God. And that should be exciting. We're looking forward. You know, we need to be looking toward the cross. We need to be looking forward to that time that we'll uh, be raised with him also. 
uh, again, in uh, chapter 17, as he's moving along, he reminds them again, chapter 17, verse 22. Let's read this. While, we, while they were staying in Galilee, Jesus said to them, The Son of Man is about to be betrayed into the hands of men, and they will kill him. And on the third day, he will be raised. And they were exceedingly sorrowful. Wow. We're not supposed to be sorrowful. We're supposed to be rejoicing in the fact that he rose. Now, again, understand, you know, they were with him and he was letting them know that he's going to have to leave. He's going to have to go. But he also reminded them on the third day he was going to raise. For some reason, it didn't lock in with them. OK, it just didn't seem to lock in. And I know there are some cultures out there that blame the Jews for killing Jesus. Uh, but, you know, it wasn't just the Jews. It's amazing how it became all inclusive. Uh, and then remember, they turned him over to Pilate. And Pilate was a Gentile. Uh, 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 so in verse 20, let's read it again. And Jesus even adds a little bit more here. Uh, verse 20, or Chapter 20, verse 17. Now Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the 12 disciples aside on the road and said to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death. And they will deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify. And the third day he will rise again. All three times on the third day, he will rise again. So there's no doubt in our minds on the third day, he would rise again. So that's why we look toward the cross. That's why we look forward to this time. And Jesus all the time was looking what? Toward the cross. It had to begin there, but he had to go through things to get there. You know, sometimes we, we just go right directly to the cross and we forget that all Jesus suffered beforehand. The beatings, being spit upon, being hit with his fist, palm of their hands, uh, being scourged, uh, which alone, a Roman scourging, which alone uh, uh, could, could cause death. Uh, uh, so we just really sometimes don't comprehend, again, still after all this time, what our Savior went through for us. But all the time, he was looking toward the cross. Think about that. For us, for us, it says, why we were yet sinners. While we were yet sinners in Romans 5, Christ died for us. Wow, that should excite us to be seed planters with the gospel of Jesus Christ, shouldn't it? I hope this has been an encouraging time for you, encouraging words. Remember, three different, three different times Jesus reminded them that he's looking toward the cross. But on the third day, okay, on the third day, he would rise again. We're reminded of this celebrating time. So I look so forward to this when we kind of experience that with the sunrise service, because, you know, the women went to the tombs early in the morning, uh, early in the morning. Uh, uh, so we get to experience a little bit of that, except Christ has already risen. So we celebrate that time and hope you're getting ready to celebrate that, too. It's not about just the Easter bunny and Easter eggs. It's about the Easter lamb, about the Easter lamb who sacrificed himself for us. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We praise you. And we bless you for this time. We thank you for your word that it reminds us that you came to die for us. But you also came to raise, to be risen for us. And Father, sometimes we forget that. Father, we serve a living Savior. We serve a risen Savior. And that's Jesus Christ, the Lord. And we thank you for that. Father, again, if anyone is watching this uh, a little tidbit time, Lord, they don't know you as Lord and Savior, that this would incite them, this would excite them to, to come to know you as Lord. Because you want them to live with you. You don't want them to live in torment. You don't want any of us to live in torment. You said you want none to perish, but all to come to repentance. So, Father, I just pray right now that you would speak to hearts in a supernatural way. Through this little tidbit, through any of the word that's going out, Father, to sharing the gospel message. Change hearts as only you can. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. I will be with you tomorrow morning for some more morning tidbits at 10 a.m. And uh, be praying for the Bradley family uh, as they lost their uncle Dave, uh, brother-in-law, uh, uh, dad, son, David Bradley, that uh, has gone on to be with the Lord. We're doing a funeral service tomorrow and a viewing service tomorrow at 10. So be with us. Uh, don't stress. Give God the mess. and He'll take care of the rest. All right. Y'all have a blessed day. Good seeing everybody this morning. Uh, be blessed, everyone. And we'll see you tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. for some more morning tidbits.